That was awesome. It was such a typical urine imping bit of water. There was always going to be one in there. G'day everyone. Today I'm going to take you through the wonderful world that is double nymphing. I'll talk you through the setup. Firstly, about the reel. I've been using my lamps and liquid for a long time now. As you can see, it's pretty worn, but the most important thing about this reel is it's got a nice smooth drag. You're using light tippets, so your drag needs to be smooth. Important part of your reel selection. Now to the leader. So this is our leader setup. It consists of an indicator, a section of clear, and then also your coloured mono to your zero weight fly line. Airflow do a great zero weight fly line that's perfect for double nymphing and it's a very hardy line that'll last a long time. So to connect your leader, you use what's called a through line connection. So you're threading your mono through the fly line. You do that with a needle in the vise and then you hit your knot with a little bit of loon knot sense because that finishes off very smoothly and it travels through your guides very easily. So our leader construction is pretty basic. It depends on the length of your rod. I've got a 10 foot rod here, so I'm going to have my coloured section about 10 feet long. So for me, that's two arm lengths. From there, I've got a 30 centimetre piece of clear because that's competition rules between your knots. And then I've got my indicator. The indicator needs to be really bright so you can see it. And to the end of that, I've got what's called a micro ring or a tippet ring. It's the perfect thing to connect your tippet to the end of your indicator. I connect my tippet ring with a simple blood knot. So that's my leader setup. Now for the tippet section. So for my tippet section, I like to use Trout Hunter. It's absolutely beautiful tippet. And I use 0.16 because we're in New Zealand, the fish are quite big generally, um, and you need that extra strength. So the length of your tippet section is dependent on the water depth. The deeper the water, the longer the tippet, the shallower the water, the shorter the tippet. You need to change this throughout your day's fishing because it'll enable you to stay in contact better with your flies. So the area of river that I'm fishing today is about a metre to a metre and a half deep. So I'm going to make my flies just over a metre long and that should keep them nicely off the bottom and I'll be able to vary that length with the indicator going in and out of the water. So I've got two sections of tippet, I've got one longer and one shorter and have my point fly on the bottom of the shorter piece and then my dropper part way up. These need to be 50 centimetres apart simply because that's competition rules um, and I'm going to use a surgeon's knot to attach my dropper and then I can tie my flies on. So for a double nymphing rod you want one that's got a nice tippy section so you can feel your nymphs through the current but you also want a grunty butt section so that you can land those bigger fish and it also helps with punching the flies out. Now to tie on some flies. So with our fly selection, I've got some mayfly patterns, I've got caddis patterns, and then a few things that just look buggy. But the most important thing is the weight and the size. So all of my patterns I have from a four mil bead right down to a two mil bead and in different sizes as the bead weight goes up and down. So that way I've got something for every type of water that I come across. Once again, simple blood knot to tie your flies on. You only really need two or three knots to do all of your fly fishing. So now that I've got my flies tied on, we can head down to the river. <laughs> 